If I walked into my house every day and saw three silver medals laying out here, I'd be a, probably an angry soul for yeah, the rest of my right. life. Notable moments from your career. You mentioned finishing sixth in the U.S. Open. How was that a turning point for you? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I we had COVID. I go from thinking I'm going to have one year on the Corn Ferry to now it turns into two because they do a super season of the two years. And then, um, you know, I then get lucky in the fact that the USGA gave the top 10 on the Corn Ferry points list a spot in that year's US Open, which I would not have tried to qualify in um, because it would have taken a week away from the Corn Ferry schedule, which every point matters to get your PGA Tour cards. I made a really nice run for the rest of the year and I had made enough points that I had locked up my card for the PGA Tour a year in advance. And so I was able to take a week off and go play in the US Open and finish sixth there, which top tens get you into the next week. Hopped on a plane to go to Dominican Republic and finished eighth. And two weeks later, finished fifth at, uh, at Vegas and needed like one more cut made to get my PGA Tour card. So literally within a two and a half month span, I go from, I'm gonna have two years on the Corn Ferry Tour to basically being on the PGA Tour. So that US Open was a starter for everything that's happened to me on the PGA Tour. It was validating. It absolutely was. I'd made one cut on the PGA Tour in like nine tries to that point. It was like, I hadn't had any reason to know that I'm gonna come out and be successful, let alone in a US Open. And then Masters rolls around and that's the biggest off course life-changing moment for me for sure. And you qualify for that 2021 Masters pretty much last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, describe that Sunday. I, I was pretty emotional in the morning. Just the gravity of the fact that a year and a half before I basically didn't have status anywhere and then now I have a chance to win the Masters was pretty, kind of hit me. I teared up a little bit, um, kind of needed a moment to myself that Sunday. I went out that last day and just said, I, I don't want any regrets. Let's just, let's do everything we can do and hit every golf shot like it's your life depends on it and had a great week and came up one short. What do you remember from the standing ovation? Just that in the moment I thought it was normal and then when Corey Connors and his caddy walked off the green and people were still standing up and clapping and saying my name I was like this is not normal. Um, being the underdog for the week and everyone feeling the people root for me on that Sunday is something I'll never forget. Um, it, it was as emotional throughout, emotional of a round as I think I've ever played. I understand those first few months after Augusta were hard. Yeah, it just it was different. I mean, you go from kind of having this general anonymity of like, oh, you know, it's this kid who's playing well to, um, you know, Adam Sandler tweeting out, you know, Mr. Gilmore's proud of you and all that. And, you know, Mr. You know, I get Gilmore's caddy and get comments like that week in, week out now. And Owen Wilson and um, I can't even think of who else. It just yeah. happened so fast. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's, if it was more, you know, if it took me a year or two of just that gentle progression, it would have been way easier. Right. But it taught me a lot. You know, I, I had started putting a lot of pressure on myself to try to get that first win or try to make the Ryder Cup team. And, you know, prior to the Masters, it was just go play golf. Jordan Spieth told me this a long time ago. He said, like, the last thing you want to do in the middle of a major is turn on Golf Channel because all of a sudden you're going to be sitting there thinking about what other people are saying or, you know, watching other people. It's like you need time to decompress. Tony Romo told me before I left for the first Masters, he said, shut your phone off. Um, you know, your life's going to change this week. Just go play your game and see what it adds up to. Um, and I've, I've always been a big fan of watching golf. So it's, it's been weird as a professional not turning on, you know, golf, just because it's like, hey, when I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation. When I'm playing golf, I'm playing golf. Like, don't be where your feet aren't. Second in the Masters PGA Championship US Open. Uh, how do you handle that? It's motivating. I, you know, I've, I've got a lot of silver medals hanging around the house that I will happily put into storage with you know, replace them with gold ones. But and is it like initially, especially given the progression over the past couple of years, like, oh my God, I can't believe I got second. And does it go from like elation to now that you've gotten second a couple times disappointment? The Masters of 21 was 
so life-changing and so amazing that that one is probably the most fun. Um, the PGA stung because I was that close. Um, you know, he played a perfect three holes in the playoff and I happened to just not make birdie on one of the easier holes and, you know, he earned it. We had no problem with that. T tell about the text you sent to your coach the night of the PGA championship after you lost the playoff. Yeah, I think I told Josh and Troy, like, I actually believe I can win majors now. And I always, you can think it and you can think it in your mind and work towards it, but now it's like, I'm going to win one. Like I firmly believe to my soul that I will win one. And coming back out in the US Open, like I played great. And unfortunately I've been, you know, I'm what, four shots from being over 12 rounds from being a three-time major champion. Like, you know, we're that close. So yeah, it's very frustrating. There's no question about that. But at the same time, I know that if we keep doing what we're doing, it'll happen. So we got our first loser collection going on over here. Um, <laughs> this was Masters Tournament 2021. Kind of cool, they give you like a platter. And actually something that Augusta does that's really cool is every year that you play, they give you a piece of china for playing. And so they basically, over the years, you will collect some fine dishes of like, you know, like a bread plate, a salad plate, an actual plate. And so if you play enough, you'll actually end up having an entire set. We ever use it? I doubt it. Um, this one means a lot. I mean, that's obviously the start for me and everything that happened. Um, you know, the, the Masters just does so many cool things for like all this tradition and giving you crystal goblets if you make an eagle and like you're having cocktails out of them and you know, it's, it's just cool. Your mom told me that you recently told her to get rid of all your memorabilia. Yeah, I mean, some of it. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, what's its purpose? Like I come home and I'm like, even at our house, like you don't see any of like my golf stuff. Cause it's like, I want to be home. I don't want to be on the road while I'm at home. If I walked into my house every day and saw three silver medals laying out here, I'd be a, probably an angry for yeah. the rest of my life. So US Open, silver medal. I played in five US Juniors, five US Sams, played in four US Opens, and I played in a Walker Cup. So I have a lot of USGA medals at home. So it's just kind of fun that I've got from Junior Am, US Am, now to this. And this one. Yeah, this so one, this, this was... really means something. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. I've actually got two letters from Arnold Palmer in my, in my life, and one of them was after I committed to Wake to go on a scholarship. This one was when I made his Arnold Palmer Cup team. And it's just kind of cool because, I mean, he personally signed everything. And I went to his office at, um, down at Bay Hill earlier this year and seeing the stuff that was at his house that he needed to sign for people that sent to him. And he would sit there for an hour minimum every day signing stuff. It's just, it's amazing. And so like, you know, he always said, you know, make your signature a gift, you know, cause you know, if you just kind of half-ass something and give it to a kid, you know, they don't know who it is. But, you know, so every time I try to sign, my name on something I always try to make sure it's legible and the first time you got one you yeah so sure I uh, really a signature. his signature looked so fake like because it was so perfect so I put my thumb on the R on Palmer and lifted up some blue ink and I was like yeah sorry mom I mean that does kind of hurt when you realize it well thankfully actually yeah signature. thankfully it didn't smudge it right. just lifted up the ink but either way my mom was not too happy with me whatsoever